So I know what you're probably thinking right now. Great, just another lecture about diversity. We've all heard it before, and we all know that diversity is important. But this talk is beyond just that. It's about being a leader among your friends, your colleagues, your peers. It's about inspiring diversity in opinions, ideas, and challenges. Because diversity is more than just about the exterior shell of race or age or gender. And by going beyond this definition of diversity is how we can build a better tomorrow. There are lots of definitions of diversity out there, but I want to share my definition with you. Because diversity is fundamentally about three things. It's about versatility, openness, and harmony. And by being a leader that inspires this definition of diversity, we can create, change, and transform the world around us. So today I want to share with you why this definition of diversity matters and why I'm standing here in front of you today. It all started about a year and a half ago when I was out to dinner with my friend Raphael in East Hollywood. At the time, I was working at a large manufacturing company in Los Angeles. I was wrapping up a three-year commitment with my team there. And while the time I had spent there was invaluable to my professional experience, I was struggling to make progress in my career development. So naturally, I was ready to take the next step, and I started thinking about MBA programs. Raphael had just received an email early, earlier that day about the new Cornell Tech MBA program. So after dinner, I hopped on my laptop and started doing some research. While there wasn't much information about the program at the time, I started getting excited about this potential for increased collaboration between business and technology, especially the MBA and Masters of Engineering co-curriculum, which involved working across disciplines to solve real-world challenges. So fast forward to August 2014. After a brief summer stint in Ithaca, I, along with the rest of my Cornell Tech inaugural MBA class, packed my bags and moved to the Big Apple. From there, we joined the incoming class of Masters of Engineering of Computer Science students. And on August 26, the long-awaited co-curriculum projects were finally announced. I had been assigned to a project that was duly titled Extracting Topics from Product Titles for eBay's Recommendation Algorithms. The prerequisites for the project were proficiency in a scripting language, i.e. Python, and familiarity with machine learning, none of which, which I was qualified for. So I certainly hope that my new teammates would know more than I did. There are four other students on my team. Aside from myself, there was a fellow MBA classmate, Missy. She had a background in organizational behavior and was hailing from nearby Westchester. Then there was Jay. He was a young and enthusiastic computer science student from India who had taught himself machine learning to build his own health analytics website. And last but not least, there was Yan Jing, a sweet but shy computer science student from China who had learned to program in several different coding languages. So after meeting for the first time uh, in early September, the four of us made the walk to campus to the uh, New York's eBay's offices. From there, we met our project stakeholders for the first time. We met Johannes, our eBay point of contact. He was a senior product manager with the merchandising algorithms team. His expertise was in collaborative filtering, content-based feature extraction, and runtime optimization. And he led a team of 15 data scientists and product developers. Needless to say, before the meeting even began, I was intimidated. And as I sat down around the conference table, I started to size up everyone around me, trying to assess where I stood among my peers and figuring out what I knew and what, who knew what. And I realized that the technical team from eBay was doing the same. As they were talking about next steps for our project, most of the discussion was being directed to Jay and Yan Jing, as Missy and I frantically scrambled down much-needed terminology like machine learning, natural language processing, and latent derelict allocation. So after an excruciating hour, the meeting was finally over. And Missy, Jay, Yanjing, and I left the eBay offices and went our separate ways. And on the walk home, I couldn't help but feeling discouraged. While this wasn't the first time that I had felt left out of a discussion, this time felt a little bit different. Working as a young female engineer 
at traditional, larger, male-dominated companies, I wasn't new to situations where people around the conference table would fail to make eye contact with me or direct questions to my male manager instead of to me. But this time it was different because I had reverted to that same mentality of making assumptions about the people around me at the conference table. And that led to a fundamental disconnect between myself and my teammates. And so it was at that time that I started to realize the importance of versatility in diverse teams. Because I had made assumptions about my own capabilities and those around me without knowing anything about them, that led to a fundamental disconnect amongst my team. And so I realized that if the four of us were going to build something together, I needed to first start with a willingness to change my own perceptions about others and be able to adapt and be flexible in this new environment. So after that first meeting, we started getting to work. And we started bi-weekly working sessions. Naturally, Jay and Yan Jing led the technical efforts of the project, while Missy and I spearheaded the business, strategy, and project management duties. We were get, getting ready for our first ever 24-hour hack day at Cornell Tech, which was an experience in itself. So on October 3rd, 80 MBA and Masters of Engineering students filed into the main studio space at the Cornell Tech campus, ready for an exciting night of coding, building PowerPoints, and of course downing a lot of caffeine and snack food. And our team came into the night with a loose plan of attack. We were going to build our first working prototype and also be able to tell a compelling user story to our audience. So as the evening began, we got hard to work, Jay and Yan Jing on building the model, while Missy and I focused on the user story. But as Missy and I were struggling to come up with content, it became clear that without a comprehensive understanding of the team's deliverables as a whole, we were never going to be able to deliver a clear and compelling and cohesive product at the end of the hack day. I was worried that we weren't going to be, meet the expectations of our eBay stakeholders and of our professors. But I certainly did not want to feel incompetent in front of my teammates, all of whom were younger and much less experienced than I was. But it was getting late, and I was getting antsy. So even though I had learned in my professional experience that I had to exhibit a sense of confidence and conviction and a sense of knowledge in order to gain credibility among my managers and coworkers and to be able to gain uh, a sense of trust with my teammates, I was hesitant to speak up at this point of uncertainty. But because I was feeling desperate, I stood up nervously while Missy was designing a narrative on the whiteboard and Jay and Yan Jing were heads down coding away amidst our man-made fort of uneven desks and rolly chairs. I stood up and said, guys, I'm sorry to have to do this to you, but I really need help understanding the technical underpinnings of our project. Do you mind taking a minute and explaining it to me? And the response was remarkable. Not only were they willing to take the time to explain what they were doing to Missy and I, but they were excited to do so. Jay got eagerly up to the whiteboard and started mapping out the different fundamentals of topic models and recommendation algorithms and explaining how they tied back to our project. Yan Jing, meanwhile, showed us her code and explain how the different technical components work together and how the APIs are fitting into the scope of our project. So just a brief moment of honesty and vulnerability had led to a world of difference. And what surprised me even more were that Yan Jing and Jay wanted to learn from Missy and I as well. Yan Jing asked about how to develop a user experience, and Jay asked about how to develop successful evaluation metrics and project management guidelines. So it was in that moment that I started to understand the importance of openness in diverse teams. By openness, I mean the willingness to be vulnerable and share your weaknesses. 
because without doing so, you're not able to unlock the full potential of those around you and allow the friends around you to fill the gaps. By speaking up in that moment of uncomfortableness, I was able to learn things from my teammates that I wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. And they learned things from me and my stories and my experiences. And perhaps even most importantly, we genuinely listened to each other, despite experience or age or title or any other of those exterior labels. So after that successful hack day, there was another hack day and yet another hack day, each more successful than the last. And after three months of working together on a team, we started to get to the end of the semester and finalize our, the end of our project. We were getting excited with the discussions that we've been having with our team at eBay. This was a fairly new area of technical research that we were working on, but the successes we had seen so far had made us more ambitious about what we could accomplish. It was nearing the end of November, and we had promised to deliver a fully working prototype by Thanksgiving, along with user validation studies and a set of evaluation metrics. While we were hopeful about getting everything done on time, it soon became clear that there was no way we were going to meet our deadline. With the other end of semester projects happening and finals coming up, we severely underestimated all of our time. And I started getting frustrated with my teammates. Jay wasn't answering his phone. <laughs> Missy was constantly unavailable. And Yanjing wasn't responding to emails. And soon enough, it was Friday of Thanksgiving. We were already a week behind schedule and we were frantically sending one-off emails to our eBay counterparts, certainly with no discernible portrayal of teamwork whatsoever. And we started to realize that we had worked so hard and so well together all semester to develop such a great product, and yet we risked losing it all at this last moment. And this rising point of contention started to get to us. So at that Friday morning meeting, I sent a message out to my team and said, you know what, let's cancel the meeting, take a few days off to unwind and relax, and let's regroup on Sunday evening. So we did that, we unwound, we relaxed, and we got back together as a team on Sunday evening. And we had an honest and open discussion about our concerns, our challenges, and our objectives for the project. And together, we created a path forward. And while it might not have been kosher in a traditional business setting, and even though we might have been two weeks late to deliver our product, by the time we handed off our final project to the team at eBay, we had a recommendation algorithm that rivaled the one that was currently on eBay's website. So together, we had come together and created a fantastic product. And so it was in that moment that I realized that through versatility and through openness, we had created an environment of harmony. Harmony in that working with different individuals, like with Missy, with Jay, and Yanjing, we had been able to collaborate and work together and build an environment of trust and relationships in order to build something greater than what we even were expecting to. So finally, it's the last day of the semester, it's December 17th, and we weren't only teammates, we were friends. And we got drinks together after class. We laughed together in the studio. And moreover, I was actually offered a position with a team at eBay, something that I would have never been able to do without the help of Missy J and Yan Jing. So as a future product manager with the merchandising algorithms team, I hope to take the lessons from Missy J and Yan Jing to help lead diverse teams of engineers and strategists, of men and women, of experienced and inexperienced peers more effectively. So I want to end this with a call to action to you as the future leaders and future managers of tomorrow that I hope that you will lead diverse teams by enabling openness, versatility, and harmony to create opportunities for others. I hope that you will create environments for others to feel comfortable speaking up because you're first to do so. I hope that you will make better, more informed decisions because you will put yourself in new and different environments. You will speak up when you're uncomfortable or when you're feeling weak. 
and you'll collaborate with others that you least expect to. Because vulnerability, openness, and harmony are the keys to leading diverse teams and to creating opportunities to drive innovation, growth, and creativity. And as Sheryl Sandberg said, don't just sit at the table, build a better one. And as the future leaders of tomorrow, I want you to not only realize the potential in your diverse team, I want you to enable that potential to be realized. Thank you.